Hey everyone. hey everyone welcome to our podcast i'm carlos i'm emily and this is where we, you know we just have a discussion and we, we see where it goes so this week something that i wanted to talk about and i've been excited to talk about this actually is uh um things that we didn't expect about becoming parents mm-hmm. and so i've come up with a couple i think you've come up with a couple i've come up with more than a couple <laughs> yeah but i'm excited i have to see what i wrote down i'm excited to have this discussion because we had not talked about this before before recording. Yeah. So we've been keeping it from each We're other. Just on the ground. If you hear any noises, Shepard is right here. He's our audience. He's just watching us. He's chilling. So we might pick him up mid podcast. Phoebe's upstairs watching cartoons. So yep. if you hear knocking, she's trying to come down here. Yeah. Just um, like, where are you? Yeah. <laughs> Um, okay. So uh, since you have more, let's start with you. What's the, what's something that you didn't expect about having kids? Okay. So my first couple sound kind of bleak and kind of like, like negative, but they're not negative. Okay. They're just kind of like, they're not, it's not what I expected, you know? Okay. So bless you. the first thing that, bless you, buddy. The first thing that I didn't expect when becoming a parent, I wrote down that I didn't expect to become a completely different person. And it, it's kind of like the person that I was before I had kids died. And that's not, I mean, that's not a negative thing because I like the person that I am now a lot better. Looking back at the person that I used to be, I was so immature. If you knew me before I had kids, like in high school, you know, I was so immature. And then looking back, at like, and I think a lot of it also has to do with the Lord because he has changed me so drastically in so many ways. Yeah. But like looking back at the person that I was before I had kids, like I do not like that person. Yeah. I think I've, I've changed too. I think before, I think it's like a responsibility thing because once you're responsible for human beings, it's like you got to get your stuff together. You be, Yeah. You become so much more selfless. And I think that's another thing that I put down. Let me check. Yeah. You're saying that's a different one? You became more selfless? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I see. I know that. Because I put down a couple ones that that might seem kind of negative to some people. I can attest to that. But then, like, the last one that I put down is, like, but I also didn't expect the kind of love and protectiveness that I have for my kids. I never thought that that was possible to feel that. And uh, the selflessness that is required for a parent is something that I don't think anyone can experience or practice until they become a parent. Sure, you can be selfless in your everyday life if you're not a parent, but the level of the level of it that I'm talking about, I think, can only happen when you become a parent. And that's not. I feel like I have to say this. Don't get offended by me saying this because this is my opinion. I don't, I cannot speak for everybody. And I'm not, I am not can you <laughs> claiming tell, to speak for everybody. Tell, this is for my, my experience. Oh, he's sick. Yeah, can he's you sick. tell that uh, Emily's been reading the comments and I, I told her, I was like, you can't, you can't read any comments because they're going to be mean people on the internet. I'm not allowed to read the and comments And so I anymore. said, you're not allowed to read the comments. Yeah. I'll read the comments because I think I can take it and I can sift through it and like take a joke. Um, even though some of these people are like super serious about hating us, yeah. but I think, um, where was I going with that? Uh, yeah. Okay. So I'm, I'm reading comments. If there's anything worth reading, I'm going to read it to you. Okay. That way it's like, you, you get to, you get to still have all the good stuff. Yeah. But, but yeah, so you're like, oh, I don't yeah, cause I want to hear, like, I want to hear what you guys have to say, but if what you have to say is mean, I think, well, and you're trying to be hurtful, I am not going to put myself in that situation either and, to like feel like let you put me down well and people have the right to be offended if we yeah if we lived in a world where like no one got offended then like it would that'd be a bad sign you know like you have the right to be offended you have the right to disagree with us okay mm-hmm. we got that covered but with that being said yes i, I do i have noticed um yeah d- you were always selfless i think you were always like super kind and selfless but having kids is like it magnified it yeah you're sure. like eating something and then they'll they'll take it like the, phoebe mm-hmm. will just be like can i have some and you're like 
Yeah. But you would do that with me too. You would like, if I, uh, if you had a drink or whatever it was and I just, I asked for it, you would like give it to me. Like you have a Coke or something and you just opened it and I'd put my hand out and you just give it to me. So you were always kind of like that. So it prepared you for. I've always been give it, giving, but yeah. especially after becoming a mom. You give, you and have maybe to give it's more. just a mom. Maybe it's just a mom thing. I can't speak for men, but like, I I ha- I know that a lot of moms are like that. My mom was like that. That's my a good mom point. gave up everything. That's a good for point because I think that guys are probably different. I think, um, like you're you're you don't even have to think if Phoebe asks for like whatever you're holding, whether it's a a toy or a drink or food, like, mm-hmm. and Phoebe asks for it, you'll just give it to her. Yeah. With me, I'm like. No, like I, I think yeah. that's like, so that's the difference between us and maybe other men and women, but it's like, you're, you're so quick to like comfort her or shepherd. But yeah. with me, I'm like, no, nope, they need to learn. Like I try to make a lesson out of everything. Whereas for you, it's like always, I'm just going to give you what you want. And I think that's the balance that we need is like, you say, I'm going to give, give, give and take care of you. And I say, well, you need to be a human being and you need to learn how to do things on your own Mm -hmm. so that's like i think it's good that there's that dynamic but yeah as far as like that change of being selfless being more selfless yeah you need to as a parent i think just even like your time your money i guess really everything when you think about it you have Mm -hmm. to be selfless um i'll read you my my first one um so what the first thing that i that surprised me was how chill newborns are and at least our kids our kids were were super chill and how much they slept like when i when i imagined having a baby it was like you're gonna have a baby and then non-stop crying right they're just gonna cry and they're just gonna poop and they're gonna like like um, they're gonna take all your time so sleep when the baby sleeps sleep when the baby sleeps (laughs) like i'm like goodness how how much um how much effort does a baby really take right and it's like people are freaking you out that like Yes, they take a lot of effort, but I think I overthought it. And so I was thinking like every second of my day was going to be taken up. But with a newborn specifically, like they sleep 90% of the time. For like the first six weeks. And then they start to be awake a little bit more. Yeah, like Shepard's about four months old. He's he's awake. He's just looking at us and looking at his toes now. Yeah, if you're a new parent and you're worried, like you're stressing, the newborn stage is the easy part. It's, it's like, the toddler stage that yeah. you gotta worry about. I think the I think <laughs> like God designed it in a way that it's like an easy or somewhat it's a easy gradual transition. Uphill. Yeah. So it's like with a newborn, you take them home and you just make sure that they're fed. You make sure that their diapers changed and their and burp. They sleep. Yeah, and then they'll just like they they sleep ninety percent of the time. Yeah, at least and our great- kids were really good with. It. I know some people have kids that like. Just right. Yeah. It, had issues there are somehow, some but. there are some kids that just have have it a little bit harder. Like they have a hard time sleeping or they're really colicky. Like those are different circumstances. But like our kids, they they we got so lucky. I lower your mic. I can't really see you. They got we got really lucky with our kids and yeah, how easy they are. Yeah, Phoebe was so chill that. We took her when she was like three weeks old or something. We took her to see Spider Man. Two, two weeks old. She was two weeks old, and you know we probably shouldn't have done this, but we took her to a movie, and um, she was in a one of those wraps. I had her in a wrap. She fell asleep. She was asleep the whole movie, and I just kind of held held my hand over her ear, mm-hmm. um, so that like because obviously movie theaters are really loud. So I just I would hold my hand over her ear so that like mm-hmm. one so she didn't really wake up. That was another thing that surprised me, though, was how much like loud noises they could handle, our kids. Yeah. And I think it's because we expose them to it so young. Right. I, I'm, I was going to say, like, uh, if there is, like, one piece of advice, and I know that someone older is going to say, like, oh, well, you shouldn't be giving advice. Blah, blah, blah. Anyway, one thing that we did with our kids was we exposed them to loud noises. I was not careful about like music and music or in the car, vacuuming especially. when they were sleeping or yeah. being loud. Because now my kids will sleep through anything and anywhere. Yeah. And I don't know how much of that is because we did that and how much of it is because, like, that's just kids are different. Right. Um, But our kids definitely, like, in the car, we 
were playing music loud, they'd fall asleep. Yeah. And we did that since they were, excuse since me, we did born. that since they were babies, since newborn. Since like the first day they were born. Yeah, we probably damaged their ears, but. No, I don't think so. <laughs> um, okay, so the next thing that I have on my list is that I didn't expect to lose friends and become lonely. And that's not, that was, that's partly, that is my fault. Well, and I think a lot of it was our situation too. Yes. Because we have, well, okay. So we were in San Diego at the time Mm -hmm. because we were in the military and we were in San Diego when we had Phoebe, she was born at the Navy hospital in Balboa. And then it's like, our, it's like the, there's an extra thing to consider when you have to make plans. And so everyone who doesn't need to consider that, all your single friends, like it's easy for them to just go make plans. But for us, it was like, yeah. oh, well, we, we have to do a little well, bit and more And then it's, it's like that some people, they, they kind of just naturally like push themselves away from you because you have kids. Because it's like, oh, well, they can't go out with us here. So, like, let's just not invite them. But yeah. then the other part of it, why I say it was my fault that I got so lonely, is, like, part of it was my circumstance and that I couldn't control. But there's also, like, and I also didn't expect this when becoming a parent, is that you have to um, put more effort into spending time with your friends and being intentional with your friends and you have to put more effort into making friends. It's yeah. really, really hard as a mom, especially as a stay-at-home mom for me. I don't know about for you, but, like, I don't get the exposure of, like, seeing people at work and everything like that. And so, like, you have to put so much more effort and be intentional with making friends. And sometimes, like, you're not always going to be able to just go out and hang out. Like, sometimes it's like, hey, my kids are being really cranky today. I do you want to come over and we can just let the kids run around it while we talk? It's helpful to have, to know people who have other kids. Yeah. I think that's why women have this kind of like, um, inherent instinct to like get pregnant with each other. Yeah. Like at any time that, um, yeah, it's like you, you hear about a girl who's pregnant and then I think Maybe for you, I'll ask you. It's like, do you feel an urge when one of your friends gets pregnant to like also get pregnant? Oh yeah, yes. Yeah. Yeah, my friend, and That's you know, what you know who you are. <laughs> um, she, uh, she's my best friend here. She was like, I think I might be pregnant, and I was like, shoot, I'm only four months postpartum, but like, I think I can handle it. Yeah. Like, I really was like, if you're pregnant, I'm pregnant. Yeah. Like, we're not gonna do this alone. And it's just like, I don't know. Like, there's something about, like, having your babies have somebody else their age to grow up with that is so, like, and then just, like, also, like, having you and your friends being, like, at the same stage of life. Yeah, you can relate to each other a little bit more. Yeah. Can you help him out? He's trying to, he's trying to (laughs) flip over. Hey, bud. What are you doing? I'll I'll just bring him up with us. Do you have anything to say, buddy? He looked like he was going to say yeah. something. He looked like he was going to say Hi, something. Hi, buddy. This is Shepard. Ignore the scratches on his the big face. Boy. He's got He's some been long nails. He keeps scratching himself. himself up. So sad. We put mittens on him and he started sucking on he them. Just, yeah. And his fingers got pruny because there's just, just no like, way. I don't winning. know what to Sometimes what else with to kids, do. there's just no way to win. Yeah. I think with him, he, if he wants to scratch himself, he just does. We tried putting hats on him and. He just rips them off. Yeah. And he does it like when he's sleeping. And yeah. So we're not going to watch. And it doesn't seem to bother him. Like yeah. he doesn't scratch himself there, and then he, cry. He doesn't he's, have any new scratches. Though, so they're they're no. healing. Yeah. Hopefully he doesn't claw himself again. Um. Okay. So did you want to do your next one? No, go ahead. Because you have more than me. I only have one more. Really? Yeah. I had four. Um. So the next thing that I didn't expect um, was I didn't expect my relationship with my husband to change so Uh oh no it's not it's not bad um but it's definitely like put him back down hold on it kind of so i didn't expect our marriage to change when 
we became parents. Because before you become parents, it's like, it's very much like you're still dating, especially early in marriage, before we had Because it's just about you two. Because it's just about you. Yeah. And you have all the time in the world together, it seems. You can do whatever you want together. You spend so much time together. But now it's like, we have to be so, inten- like me and you, we have to be so intentional about spending quality time together and actually going on dates because it's not like, it's not like it used to be where it was like every day was like a date. Well, I, I consider this a date and I'm, I'm glad that we started this because this yeah. allows us every, like at least once a week to at sit down with minutes. each other. <laughs> so like anyone who's considering starting a podcast, I think go ahead and start it or yeah, like start it if you, if you're married, especially like it gives you a dedicated time yeah. to sit down and just talk with each other. And, and we even, don't really do that. Even if like, th- that's why we started this really. Like we would, we would talk and like have funny conversation. We're like, ha ha, we need to start a podcast. But then it was like, it would be so cool to have that time together to really have a conversation. Like, let's do it for that. Even yeah. if like this podcast doesn't blow up and get huge, like it's, it's still, good for us. it's good for, yeah, it's good for us. Yeah. And these, chairs are good for us yes we got new chairs they're orange they're gigantic or they're not chairs they're beanbags beanbag chairs yeah we're trying to get like a setup and we'll figure out something for this wall if you have any ideas for the wall let us know yeah it's a little bland i can hear where are you (laughs) mommy where are you (laughs) baby we're down here all right it'll be okay let's do your last one okay so yeah my second one was okay yeah how angry I, i would get and this is something I think like you don't really understand until you become a parent. And it's I'm I'm taking a risk here because it's like um you people don't really talk about it, but I think everyone understands and everyone can relate to it. Mm-hmm. Having kids really tests your patience. So Yes, sir. Like in the middle of the night when your kids are crying and they won't go to sleep and they just keep pooping themselves. Like mm-hmm. all of that. Um that tests your patience. And I think, Mm -hmm. you know, you're kind of told like, suck it up or whatever. Um, But it's like, it's a real thing to like get angry first. And I I don't think it's like, it's not that I want to, like he's sitting up. Oh my goodness. (laughs) (laughs) But it's not that like, I want to get angry or that I'm like, I feel valid in my anger. It's just like, it's instinctual. Like it's, it feels like, like there's some sort of mechanism in your brain that's like, if something is disturbing your sleep or disturbing your task, you need to stop that thing. It's I definitely don't think that it's so much like just in your. Angry. It might be different for I us. I think it's just patience that your patience, like being so thin that you get angry. I think the biggest part of that is patience because having kids, it does teach you a lot of patience. And uh, <laughs> I mean, yeah, there's a lot of things that just test you. And I understand what you're saying because there's definitely like 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 a i know what you're gonna say like phoebe jumping on me or like tugging my hair like that i don't have the patience for that like i have so much patience throughout the day um but especially at the end of the day for some reason like being touched with you is like something that you just like you have a certain amount of touches you can handle yeah and then it's called being touched out and you know it and you know it and it always runs out when it's like my turn when i want to hug or whatever it is you're like i okay now i'm touched out which i think that might be because like maybe it's because you have more patience with your children and you're more selfless with your children than you are with me now which like you're still pretty selfless but you know what i'm saying like with your kids it's like they'll touch you a certain amount and yeah. then, like, you can't even handle me. I Maybe think it's, that's because it's, like, my kids need me. And you know that, like, I don't need you necessarily. Like, I don't need you to You don't need you me to and, survive. Yeah. But they do. And that's, like, the So you instinct. can handle it a little bit yeah. more with them. Well, but, and then at the end of the day, it's, like, you get home at the end of the day after I've already been, like, holding Shepard all day or Phoebe's jumping on me or been pulling my hair or Shepard's scratching me or everybody's wanting me phoebe's wanting up and it's just and at the end of the day like my brain is so fried and my body is just like my nerves are shot yeah yeah so the and that's like with a toddler kind of impatience i think is different so what i'm talking about with anger is like um 
everyone hears of, uh, I don't know what the like technical term is, but the shaking baby syndrome or whatever. Mm. Like when they say, don't shake your baby. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, there's a reason. When they said that to me in the hospital, I was like, like why not. in the world would I shake my baby? And still like, I, I'm not advocating for anyone to shake their baby. Like, obviously Absolutely that's, not. obviously that's not okay. But it's like, yeah, you hear it from everybody. Don't shake your baby. Yeah. And then it's like, what, who, who would do that? Right. And then and then you have a baby that's like screaming and, and won't stop I, crying. And you talk about it later and it's like, what what was I thinking? But like I'm not saying I've ever shaken our babies, but I've definitely felt the hurt. Really? <laughs> yeah. I've definitely yeah. felt like it's I like, want you to stop crying that's, right now. That's the feeling. It's like you're you've tried feeding them, you've tried changing them, you've tried burping them, and they yeah. just won't stop. And it's like that's when you just have to set the baby that's, down. Yeah, like, that's when you just walk. You set them down. You let them cry. You walk out. You get you your have, stuff together. If you, like, you know, we have the benefit of having each other, which is cool. Like, yeah. So it's like being. I could not imagine make up, being a single parent. Usually, we can make up having, for that. Yeah. Like, if I'm super angry, like usually you might still be angry, but like you'll be less than I am, and so you know you can take our baby for a little bit while yeah. I cool down. Yeah, yeah. And like that's cool. Um, other than that, like if you're a single parent, you just got to set the baby down and walk away. Yeah. I couldn't props to all the single moms or single dads out there who are doing it all by themselves I feel because bad. I could not, I could not, I'm telling you right now, I know I could not do it. Yeah. I, I need you in that sense. Like we need each other in that sense. It's parenting was not meant to be a one person thing. Even with that, you, I would say that you do 90% of the work. I think that's just a mom thing. Yeah. And you take, cause you and take it's care like, of the, all of that. At like, the end of the day, like I kind of get uh, frustrated and upset. I'm like, I do everything. But in the moment, it's like when he asks if he can help me, I'm like, no, I'll do it. Because it's the mom instinct. Well, like I, I feel like I have to do it. Like I don't want you to do it. I want to do it. Here's a good example. So when you ask me to, to get one of the kids ready for, we're going out somewhere. And you say, hey, can you get Phoebe dressed? Like, I would go to her room, grab some clothes. <laughs> I'd put them on her, bring her back down. Emily would get all mad at me because I didn't put her in the right clothes. That's not, that's not <laughs> the same. That's because he would put her, he put her in a, a red paisley denim skirt and a pink star t-shirt. And it was just, it doesn't match. Like, I don't, I want I my kid see, going out looking that. like a clown. I don't understand that. I'm like, <laughs> throw some clothes on her and she's good. You want some parent tips real quick. Number one, do not get button-up onesies. <laughs> Emily thinks that the, they're so cute. Like the onesies that button up all the way. Yeah. And they have like they have like 20 buttons. <laughs> they have like 20 buttons from the bottom of the leg all the way up, usually across the crotch, down the other leg, and then up the center. There are a like, lot of work to put on and take buttons. off every time you have to change a diaper. And I... I don't even think it looks that cute. I don't know though. I don't have like a, I don't have baby fashion sense, obviously, but those buttons are super impractical and annoying. The zippers, that's the way to go. Zippers. That's my tip. That's my parent tip. That's the only one. I have so much more. We'll have to do a whole nother video yeah. about our, our parent tip, but I don't know what else, what else didn't you expect about what's on your list? Cause you haven't read very much. Did you only do two? I had two. Okay. But I mean, yeah, there there is definitely a lot more that Whoa. <laughs> I didn't expect about. Hey. You hear him, hear him uh, making baby noises. Yeah. Um, I think the the amount of love that I have for both of our kids. He, I think he must have be held. Do you want to hold him? Mama's turn. Yeah, the amount of love that we have for our kids, I think, is something that I didn't expect either. And it's such a different kind of love, like, because you can you can be, this love, like, leaves room for frustration. And I think because when people think about love, they think, like, love is this, like, happy, happy feeling all the time. But I don't think that that's what it is. Love is, I'm going to take care of you despite. I'm putting you before me. It's selflessness. Yeah. Yeah. And so that goes hand in hand with what, what you were saying um, about being selfless. Like that ultimately is love. 
All right, here's another thing. <laughs> He's gnawing on her knuckle right Forget now. Forget about teether toys. <laughs> yeah, yeah, use your knuckles. Um, Chef does use his teether toys. So that's the other thing, though. Like, prefers a finger. How, how quickly you adapt to wiping uh, poop off of another human being, uh, yeah. you know, like changing a diaper and getting yeah, food on. Yeah, that's that. That is something that I didn't expect. Here's one. Okay. I did not expect as a mother to be so okay with touching my child's poop or their yeah. vomit or any other bodily fluid. Yeah. Because before I couldn't look at blood. If you puked in front of me or like if you pooped in front of me, ugh, no thanks. Like I wanted nothing to do. Like I can't yeah. even pop people's pimples because it grosses me out so bad. Like the oily, their oily skin on their face or like scratching someone's back. Like thinking about like the oil on their back getting under my fingernails. Like all that really grosses yeah. me out. But like when it comes to my but kids, you, I will. You suck the boogers out of their nose. Yeah. Not into my <laughs> mouth, but like into it. No, into your mouth. No, I didn't. <laughs> But like, like no, there's these but tools I don't that, like, mind. Like, it's a straw, basically. Like that I've gotten you can poop use. on my finger, and I'm like, whatever. I'll go wash my hands. I've been pooped on. Or like Phoebe threw up on me, and it wasn't like baby puke. It wasn't like spit up. It was like she threw up like noodles chunks. on to yeah. yeah chunks onto me, and I cleaned her up before I even took my clothes off. And with you, like you're a lot more patient with that kind of stuff. Like, uh, yeah, like Phoebe will throw up chunks on you, and you'll be like. Oh, my baby. Like, <laughs> I need to get you cleaned up. Oh, it's okay. Just let it out. And I'm like, what the heck? I have a I video. so bad. I hate yeah. throwing up. And I can only imagine what she, like, she doesn't understand what's going on when she's throwing up. So I can only imagine, like, she's probably scared. She's like, Here. I can't breathe. I can't control myself. Like, what is going on? This hurts. This is uncomfortable. I don't feel good. Yeah, you had her, uh, like, it was kind of funny because it was like, she's two years old. But watching this two-year-old, you're holding her hair back while she throws up into a bowl. It was like, that's something that you're going to do for the next, probably the rest, yeah. the rest of your life, taking care of Phoebe. Like Up if until she, her 21st birthday. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, maybe on her 21st yeah. <laughs> birthday. But yeah, it's like, I've uh, I've definitely like, here's, a, here's another tip um, that kind of, it goes with like being okay with bodily fluids, I guess. But with the kids, at least with our kids, and you guys will have to let us know if it's been similar with you guys, but when they burp, is there's like a certain type of burp where it's like, he's about to throw up. Right. Like, like that's you can the- hear it. It's like- It's like echoey. I've gotten used to it. It's like echoey. I I've gotten used- Yeah, it has like a certain, yeah, a certain twang to it. I don't it, know. It, it sounds It's just got a vibe. Moist. Yeah. It's got a vibe, but it's like a burp, and it's not like a burp puke. It's like a burp. And then like two seconds later comes the vomit. Yeah. And it's usually, yeah, like Phoebe doesn't do that. He's been jumping a lot. Yeah. But with him, it's like he'll burp. And then my hand just kind of instinctually goes under his like face, yeah. just ready to catch it. And then I've caught in puke in my hands quite a few times where it's just like, all right, I didn't, I didn't think I'd get this far. And then I just run to the sink and like wash it off. Yeah. But I've definitely like grown more accustomed to it the blowout still i cannot handle a blowout yeah i think and i didn't expect when having a boy the first night that we brought shepherd home he i was changing his the first time that i changed his diaper he started peeing straight up in the air yeah all over me all over our bed all over our blankets he hasn't done that to me but yeah i don't know if it's it's because i'm a guy and i can i understand his uh his urges that i shouldn't <laughs> say it like that <laughs> but like when he when he needs you get your diaper changed. when i get yeah. my diaper changed at least like i can tell when i need to pee yeah. so but i don't know like when i would change him i just i well what i would do is i'd do the wipe trick where it's like you wipe above their belly and then like they'll usually pee in their diaper and then you change them i think you weren't patient enough to to do that and so you would you would get the the rainbow yeah but we've heard worse stories than yeah than that <laughs> i think this is where we should end it i don't really have anything else to say. all right it's been about 30 minutes yeah um yeah well thank you guys for joining us this week uh 
I guess we'll we'll end it here. And uh, yeah, please follow us um, on our social medias. We have we've been going at it with social media. We've been we've been really trying to changed our logo like six times. So <laughs> sorry for all those posts, but I think we're settled for a little bit now. Mm-hmm. Changed our logo on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Um, we're on Spotify and TikTok now. TikTok. We got a TikTok account. I was surprised how how relatively easy it was to get on all these platforms. So like that was cool. Yeah. All right. Sherpa, do you want right. to say bye? <laughs> he looks like he wants to talk. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah, but check us out. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, please. We want to try to get as many followers as we can. So we love you guys. Thank you for listening. Bye. Bye.